Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're tackling a critical issue that could reshape the Philippines' defense strategy, the potential of air-launched cruise missiles, ALCMs, for the Philippine Air Force's upcoming multi-role fighter, MRFI platform. Given the increasing security challenges, particularly in the West Philippine Sea, the addition of ALCMs could provide the Philippines with powerful, long-range deterrence capabilities. But is this a viable option? Let's break it down. The first factor to consider is compatibility with the multi-role fighters shortlisted by the Philippine Air Force. First, Lockheed Martin F-16 Viper, the F-16 Viper, a strong contender for the MRF role, has demonstrated compatibility with a range of air-launched cruise missiles, including the AGM's 158 JSSM, Joint Air Surface Standoff Missile. This missile boasts a range of over 370 kilometers, ideal for engaging targets in the West Philippine Sea without needing to be within range of enemy defenses. Lockheed Martin's extensive experience in integrating missile systems into the F-16 platform makes it a solid choice for ALCMs. Second, KIKF-21 Borame. Although the KF-21 is still in development, its design focuses on advanced avionics and compatibility with a range of modern missiles. South Korea has developed the Taurus KEP-350, a cruise missile with a range of approximately 500 km, which could potentially be integrated with the KF-21. With South Korea as a defense partner, the Philippines might have a unique opportunity to secure advanced missile technology for this platform. And third, Saab JS-39 Gripen E-F, the Gripen E-F, known for its versatility, can also deploy cruise missiles like the Taurus KEP-350. Saab's Gripen has a modular weapon system, making it adaptable to a variety of munitions. If chosen, the Gripen could support ALCM integration relatively seamlessly, given Sweden's experience in missile integration and willingness to work with partners. Choosing a fighter jet that can easily support ALCM integration could save the Philippines' time and resources in deployment. China's artificial islands within the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone EZ, pose a significant threat to Philippine territorial integrity. These man-made islands are heavily fortified, equipped with airstrips, radars, and missile systems, allowing China to project its power over the region. With ALCMs on an advanced MRF, the Philippine Air Force could theoretically counter these installations by holding key structures, such as airfields and radar installations, at risk from a safe distance. The range provided by cruise missiles allows fighters to avoid getting too close to Chinese air defenses. This would offer the Philippine military an effective deterrent and potentially shift the balance in securing its EEZ. With long-range strike capability, the Philippine Air Force could hold adversarial assets in the West Philippine Sea at risk without direct engagement. Of course, adding ALCMs to the Philippine Air Force's arsenal would require significant investment. Not only would the missiles themselves come with a high price tag, but additional costs would arise from the necessary training, integration, and potential modifications to the selected MRF platform. Additionally, air-launched cruise missiles have a limited shelf life, which means a continuous budget will be necessary for maintenance and potential replacement over time. A key question is whether the cost of ALCMs justifies the strategic advantage they offer in the West Philippine Sea. Given the Philippines' other modernization priorities, such as naval and ground forces, it will be essential to consider whether ALCMs align with the overall defense spending strategy. One intriguing possibility is the role of the Self-Reliant Defense Posture SRDP, program in the production or assembly of ALCMs. Through partnerships with foreign defense firms, the Philippines could explore options for local assembly of missile components or, at minimum, maintenance facilities that can extend the missile's service life. South Korea, Sweden, and the United States have all shown varying levels of openness to sharing technology with defense partners. 
If the Philippines upt for either the KF-21 or Gripen, it may have better prospects for some level of technology transfer or licensed production compared to the F-16, which typically comes with more restrictions. Establishing a production capability would reduce long-term costs, support local industry, and contribute to the SRDP's objectives. Could local production of ALCMs become a game-changer for Philippine defense? Equipping the Philippine Air Force with air-launched cruise missiles is a significant endeavor with strategic, financial, and operational implications. Here's a quick recap. Fighter compatibility, all three MRF contenders could potentially support ALCMs, with the F-16 Viper, KF-21 Boromay, and Gripen EF offering varying degrees of integration ease and flexibility. Strategic need, with China's assertive actions in the West Philippine Sea, having a long-range strike capability could serve as a powerful deterrent. Financial impact, DLCMs are a significant investment, and long-term maintenance costs must be factored in. The financial commitment must be weighed against other defense needs. Local production potential, through the SRDP, there may be a pathway to producing or maintaining these missiles locally, especially if defense partners are open to technology sharing. Ultimately, whether the Philippines pursues ALCMs for its future MRF will depend on balancing these factors, capability, cost, and strategic fit within its broader defense priorities. If you enjoyed this analysis and want to see more content on the latest in Philippine defense and regional security, please hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications.